Hello and welcome to Tomlin's Harmonica Podcast, where I'll be hanging out with players and teachers and having conversations loosely based around harmonica. This week's podcast is part of a series where I'll be interviewing beginners instead of pros, so that you can hear what it's like starting out on the harmonica journey. Although this week's guest John has been playing for 30 years, he's recently realized he needs to go back to the beginning and strengthen his foundations. All right, well, welcome to the podcast, John. Thank you so much for agreeing to, to take part in this. Um, pleasure. Thank you. So before we get started, I've got a few questions I want to ask you, but before we start with those, will you just tell us a little bit about, uh, about you, so kind of where you're from and what you do and all that? Yeah, I live in a place called Billingham, near Middlesbrough in Teesside, in the northeast of England. Uh, and actually, I've lived here all, I'm, I'm 65, I've lived here all my life. I was born about three miles down the road. I lived in, in this house here since we were married 40 something years, 42 years ago. Uh, I, even, I worked down the road seven miles away, so I haven't been very far in my working life. At a, a nuclear power station down the road from here, Hart, Hartlepool. Worked there for 39 years, and I was just, just retired from there a couple of years ago. Uh, so basically, I was an, I'm an electrician by trade, uh, and started playing the harmonica a long time, when I was about, well, uh, in, in the early 80s I started playing, started playing in the, in the early 80s, you know. Uh, when I was at school, when I was a lad at school, it was, in the, it was during the mod era, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, bands like the Yardbirds and uh, Paul Jones, you know, Manfred Mann, uh, Rolling Stones, and they, they all had harmonica players, which I, I loved the sound of it, you know. And, I, and uh, But it took me years to find out that it was the ten-old diatonic that was the one yeah, because you know, you used to get harmonics for Christmas with the tremolo ones and trying to play blues on them, impossible, you know. And uh, no internet back in the day, you couldn't find out anything from the internet. You had to ask musicians, and some of them wouldn't tell you, you know. Uh, I eventually found out the 12 hole was the one to, to get, so I got that from a local toy shop actually. That was about that was I mean, that was in the mid 80s, but and then I get to figure out second position, I didn't know, you know. Because it, it was in the key of C. Uh -huh. well, listening to records, putting a stylus on and going back over and all, all that stuff, you know, learning like that, purely by ear. Uh, then I went to a local club one night, one night there, a local club there, and the owner had been a harmonica player in a band in the 60s, and he told me what to do. And he, and he said, well, you, well, come to the club next week. There's a band on with a good harmonica player. And the band was called the Blues Burglars, and it was Paul Lamb. You know, oh, wow. Paul Lamb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Paul Lamb, the King Snakes. That, that yeah. was his first band. Well, one of his early bands before the King Snakes. It was there. Uh, he was playing, and I talked to Paul, and it was the first time I'd seen someone with a bullet mic, you know, and, and all that. But, but, but prior to that, I got into uh, when I was still at school when I was fifteen. I got into uh, I liked Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee. Big fan of theirs, you know. Uh -huh. I had one of their records. Trying to play along, trying to learn it with the harmonica, the wrong harmonica, and everything. And then they came to uh, they, they did a. In 1971, did a blues a blues tour with uh, a load of them on the, on the on the bill. Booker White was on the bill. Champion Jack Dupree. They were top of the bill. So I was really looking forward to seeing uh, Sonny Terry. I couldn't wait to see my you know my hero. And then, but before him was a band on called the Chicago Blues All Stars, and Willie Dixon was the bass player. And the harmonica <laughs> player was uh, no kidding, yeah, Willie Dixon. And, uh, and the harmonica player was Big Walter. Oh wow! And I, I, I didn't know, didn't know anything about him when he came on. I was looking forward to seeing Sonny Selly top of the bill, and he was fantastic. But when uh, when Walter came on, the, the sound he got with the harp, I couldn't believe it. You know, I was fifteen. Uh, um, it was a long time ago, but I'm sure he was playing just through the PA, not the amp. You know, uh -huh. and that, 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 I thought, well, I, have to, I thought I won't have to learn how to do this and and try and master it and find out how he does it. But I, I, for years, I was convinced he had some kind of special effects going on, mm -hmm. and obviously he didn't. He was uh, that good a player, you know. So yeah, then then I saw the Lammy a few years later, Paul Lamb, and then started from there, you know. But really, just there was no internet them days, and you get to get to learn by just trial and error, you know. Yeah. And so basically, I've I've been playing all those years, but I still think I'm a beginner because I, I knew nothing about music theory at all, nothing, not not a thing, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I joined a band. I was in a band for 16 years, and when I joined the band, I, I had about maybe 10 licks, you know. Uh -huh. and basically, basically, I, I, I winged it. 
for, for, for all those years in that band, with, with it, learning a few more licks and getting a bit better, but, but really that, that was it. And when I, when I, when I retired, I thought, well, it's time to uh, delve a bit deeper. And that's why I joined your school, you know. So now I find really, as far as music thing is concerned, I'm an absolute beginner. But I'm enjoying learning, picking it up and learning, you know. That's good. That's good. I mean, it, it's kind of interesting because, you know, you're uh, people starting to learn now. If someone picks up a harmonica or any instrument now, it's so easy to find a million great teachers and different ways to learn because you do have yeah. the internet. But but you know I'm I'm listening to you describe going to see Willie Dixon play and Big Walter and Sonny yeah. Terry and Paul Lamb. I mean we can still see Paul Lamb, but yeah. none of those other guys. And like the just the idea that you saw Big Walter live, yeah. mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's very yeah. absolutely nuts. This was the first the first harmonic play that I ever saw was the best one I've ever seen. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's. I mean, you just don't. Well, certainly in the UK, you don't. You don't see huge amounts of of great harmonica players these days. No, you don't. No. There no. are, you know, the, the the Paul Lambs and the Giles Robsons and and, and yeah. a few others, but the the circuit isn't like that anymore. It isn't yeah, it was in, in the uh, in the in the mid to late eighties, early nineties. It was great. You know, there's was, was a, was a couple of blues clubs just not far from where I live, and you could go. You go every week and see someone really great. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Johnny Mars, people like that, you know, yeah. all those people. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. So, yeah. I mean, you you piqued my interest when I, I put out a post in the forum saying that you've got thirty years of experience, but but you found out that you're a beginner, and yeah. and I think you're 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 probably selling yourself very short, but you're you're probably in a position that a lot of people are, where uh, you you've got a lot of musical ability naturally because you've learned by ear, but you don't necessarily know what it is that you're doing. That's right. Yeah. Um, and I mean, does, does that, does that put you off playing with people? Does that put you off playing? No, not at all. But not at all. It doesn't know, but it's, it kind of limits, I think it limits me, you know, a bit. I managed for, I managed for all those years in the band. And uh, for, like, for example, we used to do, uh, we used to play House of the Rising Sun in the band. Mm-hmm. And it was in D minor. So I went and I had to go and get a, an A minor harp and play it in second position to uh-huh. play D. And uh, I didn't know I could play it on a, in, in third position on a, on a, a C, probably. Yeah. I didn't try and try, but so things like that. So, uh, you know, it, the, thing, the thing was, it's uh, every, every time you get a, a, a CD or a DVD or an instructional video or something, they always assume you've got a little bit of musical knowledge, and if, yeah. you, if you've got zero musical knowledge, it's difficult. But on your course, it's uh, you go really back to basics, you know. So that's why I, that's why I'm finding it quite enjoyable. And even though I've, I've been playing for thirty odd years, I'm on. I thought I would start. I, I always knew I wasn't an advanced player, you know. I thought intermediate. I never mm-hmm. described myself as intermediate player, and so I went, went in the intermediate course at first, and I thought, no, oh, no, there's stuff here I, I don't really know. So I went back and back to the beginner. I thought, well, no, I'm going to start start right from scratch and, mm-hmm. uh, and skip through the course until I find my level, you know. Yeah. But after after a few few days, I thought I wasn't really skipping anything because, mm-hmm. I mean, like for example, uh, like the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord, I didn't know anything about that. Yeah. I've been playing for all these years. I played purely by instinct, listening to twelve bar blues, you know, mm-hmm. and when the Guitar player would not have to come in, pro bars and, and little fills in between, you know. And then, you know, you learn, you learn when to come in and when to stop. Uh, but I find it really interesting to learn, learn about the, the, uh, the actual way it's all built up, you know. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's hampered me really, but, but uh, I, want, I, want, I wanted to get a knowledge of, you know, mm-hmm. of uh, fundamentals. That's why, I, that's why I joined, you know. Yeah. I, I think one, one thing that you, you need to be kind of pleased with is is the fact that you have put all that time into to your ear training because m- music theory will come quite quickly you know you, you study it and apply it. it it won't be that difficult for you to pick up the right. thing that that takes a long time is the thing you've already done you've, you've sat and you've you know worked things out by ear and you've practiced playing by ear and by feel yeah. and you know if if, if i ask 90% of my students why they want to play harmonica it's so they can go and play in a band so you're already in a position where you can do that yeah. um, 
I, I totally get the thing of, of wanting some more music theory and I don't, I'm definitely not going to say uh, you don't need music theory because I'm, I'm a music teacher and I think music theory is brilliant. Yeah. Um, but, but it's, uh, you, you've already done a lot of the hard work, which is very cool. Mm. But not, not only that, it's only the theory, it's the, it's, the, it's the embedded bad habits you get from learning like I did. Mm. Um, things like uh, not always playing clean notes, for example, you know, yeah. or, start, or starting on a double stop and then, and, and then slurring into the right note. You know, you know what I mean? The kind of thing where you, you, play, you play a double, you might play a four, four or five, you've got to go back down to the four, you know, uh, yeah. to correct yourself. Uh, things like that. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't until I listened to your podcast with... Uh, Lee Sankey was one of them, and uh, the last one, Veed, Veed Go Gobach, uh -huh. when he said, you know, it's uh, people who learn to play by ear and, and wing it in a band like I have, and, and you know, the, the more less, the more you, the more you practice and practice, you're not, you're not getting anywhere like that, that much because you've only got so much knowledge. Are you with mm -hmm. me? So if you have a little bit more knowledge and get rid of some bad habits and better breathing and all that, I think, it'll, I think it's a good way to go, you know? Yeah. I, I I think it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant that you're doing that because um, I I think I think a lot of people are quite scared of music theory and they're yeah. if they're experienced they're quite scared of going back to to f their foundations. Did did you experience that at all? I did. Well, it was it was it's difficult. I mean, not, it used to. I mean, like you like you said in some of your podcasts, it's easy to just put on a, a thing on YouTube and play along with it and have a good time. I think oh, I've really practiced it. I've done mm -hmm. well there, but yeah, you, you haven't really practiced at all. To go back and and do like the twelve, the, 12, the simple twelve bar blues that you teach in your in the, in the early part of your course, I found it difficult to do them. You know, to 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 follow the uh, tab and mm -hmm. do it like that. I've never done that. That's just, it's always been in my head, you know. So I, I did find it difficult, but I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying yeah. the challenge. Right. Yeah. That's 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 great. So I'm uh, I'm I want to try and get you to go back in your mind to sort of early days of of playing. Uh, I was wondering, kind of, what what was the biggest struggle at the beginning? Well, but, well, learning the learning the bend notes was a struggle. Mm -hmm. Well, the, well, once you get that, but what I've, what I found I've, since I haven't even got all the bends because, like with the three draw, I can get, get the first two, I can't get the last one. You know, uh -huh. I didn't even know I wasn't getting that, but I'm not. Uh, learning the bend, uh, playing single notes, I found that very difficult. You know, it's so easy to. Just slur everything and get that that cordy sound, you know. Yeah. And then, uh, you've got to really, you've got to really stick in and do that, and it gets boring and all that. But yeah, that's what you have to do, you know. And uh, and also with back in the day with no internet and no, I was I struggled to find I struggled to find the right key for harp, you know. Mm. I put a record on and it might be uh, on a little water or someone and play along with the C harp. And next thing, the same song, he changes harps and it goes wrong, you know, and you you wonder what's going on there. And it was. Obviously, he's changed his harp or something, you know. Uh, but yeah, but bending notes and and the uh, and the playing single notes were the most tricky things for me when I started. Mm -hmm. but, but people, you know, if you persevere, you will get there. You will get there in the end, you know. If you keep, if you keep doing it, yeah. Definitely, I, I think the the thing is is being aware of what the time timelines are like for most people. Um, and I think at, at the beginning, you know. You, you know that you need to learn how to play clean notes, but no one says that it might take you months, years. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, it does, yeah. Yeah, it's a, the, the, the results are incremental, you know, you've got to keep keep going. And sometimes you sometimes you think you're getting nowhere, then one a week later, that, that bit will click into place, you know, and you, and you can kick on from there, you know. So, yeah, I mean, people shouldn't be disheartened because if, if it, can, it can be done, you know. Definitely. So you, you've, you kind of... You've decided to to go back to to your foundations and and build them up again. Uh, what what are you what are you hoping to achieve with that? What's your kind of next big goal? Well, I've never I've never played in uh, third position, so I want to do that. I want to learn that. I think that's what I'd be. That's, I think it's for uh, different styles of funk and styles like that. Third position is a great great way to play, but it's but of course. The muscle memory for second position is so ingrained into my head now. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dive straight in and do it. I'm gonna work through the course till I come to that bit mm -hmm. and learn it, learn it like that. Because I think by doing that, I'll have learned the learning process will have Im embedded in, in my brain. And I might be able to follow it. I'd rather just dive in, you know, and do it. So I want to play the third position. I want it 
even things like the torn. I want, I want a bit of torn. Uh, I used to think torn was if you bought a if you bought a Fender Blues Deluxe and you got a right hand, <laughs> I torn, but it doesn't it doesn't at all. It's all it's all here, isn't it? You know, yeah. It's all in your it's all in your mouth. I mean, you the way you you sure and everything like that. But the gear, it's secondary, you know. Mm. So anyone don't let anyone tell you you need posh gear, but you need decent stuff. But that won't give you the tone buying the buying the, the top mic and on the amp. You know, you need to practice to get it. Which, which I I'm getting there with it, but I'd love to get a nice fat tone like uh, like Madison Slim or someone like that. You know, mm-hmm. some of those ones. You know, really that kind of player. You know. Yeah. yeah. No, I I think it's it's really good. It's really good for people to hear you saying that. Because, because yeah. you know, I, I say it all the time to people when when people say, you know, what amplifier should I buy, and 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 what what microphone's going to make me sound amazing, and you know, it's basically if if you put, uh, you know, a top player through the the cheapest nastiest amp and right. a crap microphone, they're still going to sound killer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah. it's the technique. Yeah. This is sick, mate. I don't know if you know, we know a band called Nine Below Zero. You know, oh, yeah. Them. Yeah, yeah. Mark Norton, our player. I used to, we, we, our band supported them a few, a couple of times, and he, he had a, he had an SM57 and a little, uh, a little uh, microphone preamp, a cheap little thing. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he, sounded, he sounded great, you know, he sounded fantastic. And it was just, and when, he, when he put that on one side and played to the PA, he sounded just the same, you know. Yeah. So it isn't, it isn't anything to do with the gear. So don't, don't waste thousands of pounds on it. On a bass one, not worth it. Definitely, and and also, I mean, just a, a, a basement. If you have one, um, and and you try and get it to a volume where it sounds good, oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you can't be in the same room with it. It's no, too right. loud. Well, yeah, and anyone complains about the harmonica player being too loud. You know, I've got a, I have a, a blues deluxe upstairs, but I, packed, I stopped using it in the band because he couldn't play. It was just too loud. You know, mm-hmm. uh, he was just drowning everyone else out. You know, and so yeah, definitely. Learn to play, get a nice tone acoustically first before you start uh, moving on like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. that's absolutely yeah. crucial. Mm-hmm. Um, very cool. Uh, one thing I, I also wanted to ask you um, is is how how you how well how you've practiced in the past and how you're practicing now and if that's changed. Well, it's changed absolutely. Yeah, I never used to, I never really used to practice in the past. I used to listen to records and then when when CDs came out, CDs and Im- trying to imitate that. You know, uh, revert, you know, backwards and forwards with a CD player and learn that bit, learn that's really well with him, you know, with James Scott, whatever it was, you know, mm-hmm. learn that riff, learn that, learn that, like, learn that, like, build it up. And, uh, and that, I thought that, that was the way I used to do it. And then, uh, when I was in the band, we used to rehearse, that, and that rehearsing is not the same as practice, is it? You know, it's, no. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, people say, oh, we've had a band practice, they've had a rehearsal, mm-hmm. you know, so. Well, that's that's why, and then I went on. I went on to uh, YouTube with all these people like yourself, Will Wilde, all you know, uh, Adam Gusso, all these people. I was I was watch, watch, like watching them and thinking. The thing is, you, you're dipping in out of this, and you never you never on actual course. You dip in, and you think, oh, mm-hmm. today I'm going to do some tone work with one of these and you do a bit of that, then someone else is doing something else. It's never practice, you know. Yeah. So I went. So, so now I thought, well, what I have to do is practice every day, do scales, which I've never done before. Scales, uh, proper breathing, do that every day, even if it's only for half an hour, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's, well, that's discipline, which I've never done before. So that, that's that's the big change, yeah. That's why I'm, I find, that's why I find out I'm a, actually a beginner, not a, you know, in, in that sense of the word. Uh, learn the scales, you know. The blues scale, first time I did that was a few months ago, after all these years, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's very cool. I mean, it, it, you're definitely not a beginner. You you just you you're you're like a lot of people, and and I, I was definitely in this camp of, as well, kind of musically, where if you're self-taught, you 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 work on things that you're interested in, and so you might yeah. get pretty advanced on on this thing, and then right. not yeah. so advanced on the foundation. So there's there are gaps that need to be filled in, um, True. which is what you're doing, which is absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Um, so bef- before we wrap up, I, I, I kind of wanted to know if there's anything that, uh, anything you're really struggling with now that you, you want to know about, or if you have any questions, uh, well, while I'm, I'm here. I'm a bit, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know whether to post, I, the reason I haven't posted much on the forum was because I, I'm, I'm in the beginner class. Mm-hmm. 
things. I don't I feel well, you know, I put something on there everything, what's he doing in the beginning? He's not gonna make him play all right, you know. So I don't so I'm a bit dubious about putting stuff on. I might I might post something from the band from the band days some years ago and say this is how it sounded back then, you know. And uh when I get to the end of this module, uh, whatever the twelve bar blues is at the end of the beginners module, mm-hmm. I'll, if I learn that learn that properly and, and post that as well. Something like that, you know. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not struggling. With, I'm not actually struggling with anything, but it's just what no one what the right things to post on the forum, you know. I don't, yeah. I don't want to be a big shot on there. So, you know, I'm going to already play, you know. I, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, there, even within different levels. So for, for people who don't know how the the forum works um on my harmonica school there there's a section for beginners advanced beginners intermediate and advanced intermediate yeah, yeah. Right. um and so i i get i get the issue that you're describing is you're, you're maybe a, a more advanced player but you'd be posting in the beginner section um yes. i i wouldn't worry about that i would i would post some stuff it's because it, a big part of of learning uh, especially when you start getting into these kind of practice routines is getting the feedback um yeah. so if i can say you your rhythm is spot on, but this thing needs tweaking, yeah. or this then that's going to be really helpful. Um, that's exactly what I made, yeah. Mm. So don't 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 that, worry about it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it then. I'll do it. Yeah. All awesome. Right. Yeah. Right. Very okay. very cool. Well, th- this has been really interesting, and uh, thank you so much for for spending some time with me today. No uh, I'm sure I'm sure the listeners will will find it really interesting and useful to to Not hear so, yeah. hear yeah. a story like that. Uh, so yeah enjoy the rest of your day and uh, yeah, thank you Thanks catch lots. you later and I, I'm looking out for recordings from you so <laughs> I'll do it I'll post I'll start post yeah brilliant okay. alright take care thank you so much for listening to this episode of Tomlin's Harmonica Podcast don't forget to subscribe and leave a rating and review on your podcast player of choice join me next Monday for the next episode happy harping <laughs>